Fox. My next guest thinks that a flight out of U.S. Treasuries could spark a stock rally. Might. Well, let's find out more from Rick Bensignor. He is the chief market strategist for Execution Noble. Rick is the author of New Thinking in Technical Analysis, Trading Models from the Masters. That's a catchy title, Rick. Yeah. That's great. Congratulations on the book. Thank you. When Thank am I going to get a copy? Uh, I will bring you one next time. All right. I want it signed. Sign. I, want you, I want you to sign it with your prediction for what's going to happen with the stock market. Short term, you're bullish. Right? We are bullish. Um, since uh, I guess about two and a half weeks ago or so, we eliminated our bearish bias um, for the medium term. So we're medium Put term. Put the bear in hibernation. We bit. have. Um, we why? are medium. To, why? Because um, if this market really was going to break down under that roughly S&P 1050 level that people were kind of saying it would, then why are we trading above 1100? Then why are so many people who were short really stuck now with bad trades on? Underinvested, chasing after performance. Um, Looking too much. to the second half, benchmarking yeah. their returns yeah. against the indices, but they're only up like one one percent. But right. some people are underwater. That's for sure. That's for sure. So we think technically, behaviorally, remember we talked about that there were only ten percent bulls when we made that low July first. Um, that was a contrary just, indicator, absolutely. right? Absolutely, huge, perfect clue along with some timing models that help us, you know, discern that you really have a bounce coming here. The extent of the bounce is what I think has caught a lot of people off guard and, and, and has many concerns who, who are under, under invested or short. Um, so we have two upside targets, just for starters. 1,030, 31 in the S&P, which was just a couple points shy of here. That's right. We're 11.27 today. Right. right. So we're very close to where we could hold and pull back from, at least for trading purposes. But if we can push through here, then we think you probably get the upper 11.50s to upper 11.60s, which is still another 3% or so higher. So the bear stays in hibernation for how long? I mean, until Labor Day, until September? Uh, or do we just have to kind of play it by ear? I think August is generally going to be fairly quiet but with still some type of upward bias to it. And unless we got back under, I mean, not necessarily 1,100 because it's a round number, probably last week's low was somewhere around 1,085. I think as long as we hold above that, this thing still has an upward bias to it. All right, so an upward bias, and do we look towards the end of the year? Are you a little bit more neutral there? Um, it's a good question. And I don't typically prognosticate many months out, especially given this type of marketplace where continually, uh, if you can guess the next 24 to 72 hours correct, you're hitting a home run. Uh, those who you get your 600 like uh, like a rod, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if, if you can get a bunch of trades right now and just kind of get in the market, play for a quick move and get out, chances are that's the right thing to do. Because unless you want to really make a decision, stick to it regardless of what the market shows you. Short term. Short to medium term. So people who were just uh, stubborn bulls who maybe were long at S&P 1150 and watched this trade all the way down to just about 1,000 and now say, you see, it's, it was the right thing to be long. Well, yeah, if you want to face a 15% sell-off, it's fine. Most PMs and hedge funds don't want to have those type of losses. They can't take that kind of hit. No, no, not with the size these guys trade. So I don't think, by and large, too many people out there in this environment are consistently getting that medium-term call correct without huge adverse movement. So what we're trying to do consistently is get our clients into and capture five, 10 percent moves in the S&P and say, boom, take it, run. Take the, take the profit, and, be and thankful, and right. then move on. And so, so what's another trade that you're looking at? Because I know that you've been focusing on currencies. Dollar strength? A lot of people looking at the euro, 130. They say maybe the euro goes higher. What happens Absolutely. to the dollar? Absolutely. Um, I actually had a client say to me today that, and he's a hedge fund, gets research from all over the street. He said, Rick, you are the only bull in the dollar out of all the research I get right now from technicians on Wall Street. That's a thin, you got a thin file on, <laughs> that, on bullish dollar trade. That's a very thin file. Uh, the dollar index got down to about 80.50. Um, now, this is against the basket of U.S. trading is, currencies. This correct. is that DXY that we always talk correct. about. The DXY. Um, so it's been selling down for several months now. The 200-day moving average was right in that neighborhood. Some other measurements were in that neighborhood. Fibonacci numbers are just a touch beneath Fibonacci, there. Fibonacci, we love him, Don't right? You? Yeah. Don't you? Um, but here's the kicker, and here's why I think it's worth going against the grain. Just as the S&P's got to 10% bulls on the bottom, coming into today, Pim, the amount of bulls in the dollar right now, 6%.
Six percent. Six out of a hundred are bullish on the dollar. Correct. So you're one of those six. You I, gotta am be. One of, I am one of those six. It's a lonely trade. It man. absolutely is. But those are often the times that you make the best money is going counter trend if you pick the right places. There's a lot of things lined up right now for why the dollar can rally. Well, let me talk about trends, because one of the trends I know you've been looking at is this rush into bonds. Yeah. You think that's maybe not going to last if we can get above 3% on the 10-year. Exactly, and that's the caveat here. The downtrend line from the March high when we hit 4% in U.S. 10-year Treasuries comes in just about 3%. And last week it was at 305. It's a downward sloping line. We hit the downtrend line and backed right down off of it again. Now it's around 3%. I think if we can get above that, and not for a day or two, but actually get above and stay above, then you could see asset allocation occur, whereby portfolio managers sell out of bonds, and they've got cash now. Where's that going to go? It possibly goes to what is theoretically a cheap stock market, which helps fuel the stocks higher. All right. Those are interesting calls. All right. We're going to have to see what happens. I want to thank you very much, uh, Rick Benson, your execution noble. Thanks, the man. bear in hibernation. He's a bull on the dollar, and you heard it. If we can get above 3% on the tenure, might be good for stocks.